Hello and welcome everyone to this new episode of Tech Mantra with Rohan and Sultan. I'm joined here with my co-host Sultan. Hello Sultan. Hey Rohan, good to be here. Beautiful morning. Indeed. Sun, sunny. Folks, today we are going to spend some time talking about secure access and ZDNA, Zero Trust Network Access. We'll discuss the drivers behind the secure access and what makes this different from the traditional VPN that we have come to know and continue to use. Indeed, Rohan, you know, uh, secure access, just for the audience, uh, we've been talking a lot about SASE. SASE is about SD-WAN and cloud security. Secure access is a key element of, of cloud security. And um, in this age today where um, people are working remotely, they need access to their, you know, their enterprise applications, their workloads, um, secure access becomes an important topic from that perspective. But with also the unfortunate circumstances of the pandemic, the whole work from anywhere remote work has created many new challenges and requires a very holistic new approach in terms of how we can ensure secure, high performance connectivity. Indeed, Sultan, you know, many of these corporate workers were forced to work remotely for their own safety by avoiding large gatherings and avoiding the spread of the infection. Yeah. And the reality, even now, after vaccination and ability to control the pandemic, a lot of people have that concern of going back to office and many employers will need to consider creative ways of retaining employees, including making them work remotely a uh, long-term solution. Absolutely. And speaking about working from everywhere, I mean, this pandemic really kind of put people on their back heel. Um, but we know a lot of our colleagues who said, hey, I can work from anywhere. I'm going to go to Hawaii and spend the next six months enjoying the beautiful scenery, the warmer weather. Um, but that's just a reality, right? So, you know, none of this is new. Remote access isn't new. Um, but, you know, while We've been using traditional VPNs to connect remote users. You know, we should note that VPNs were designed originally to help those remote users connect back to their corporate enterprise data center. Why? Because that's where the applications resided. They were, everything was right there in that corporate data center. There was very little to no requirement to connect to things like cloud. We've gone full 360 to speak. Today, a lot of our applications are no longer in that corporate data center, but they're being hosted in the cloud. They're being designed for the cloud. We are consuming cloud in many different ways, including software as a service. So these cloud-based services. And this is really what becomes the most obvious challenge is that those traditional VPNs were not designed for the cloud. Why? Because, you know, as we look at today's work environment, especially because of this pandemic, the volume of users that are having to be supported remotely, these remote users, has increased significantly. And VPNs were not designed for this type of scale, truth be told. And as we go into this scale, we realize that not only do the number of users increase, but the volume of traffic that these users are generating is increasing. So, Enterprise customers, in order to continue supporting this environment in an existing traditional VPN, if they could do it, they're going to have to start spending a lot of money to extend their VPN footprint, buying more VPN mm -hmm. gateways. But when you do this, you're spending a lot of money. money. But the part that we're not also counting is think of the IT teams who have to now support this extended footprint. Those same teams that are resource you know, limited, they now have to find ways to manage and operate this extended infrastructure, which means additional operational expenditure. So it becomes a very costly proposition to enterprises. Building on that, we know that VPNs, traditional VPNs, continue to struggle with supporting these new modern applications like medical imaging. We've seen radiologists who've had to work remotely because they're non-essential workers, but yet their work is very important, um, struggle to get enough bandwidth to be able to handle the performance of their VPNs, uh, of, their, of their medical imaging applications, those high resolution image applications. So VPN has some limitations there and actually can become a bottleneck. Finally, security, we can't ignore that. And what I'm really talking about here is the nature of security breaches today has become so sophisticated. These new cyber threats, 
I mean, the truth is that VPNs were not designed to withstand these type of breaches to be able to resist them. And in fact, if you think about it, VPNs and the existing traditional VPN infrastructure can actually be a source of breach because it can present significant ways of how people can penetrate and breach the enterprise infrastructure. And uh, indeed, uh, I'm going to extend on this uh, security thought when the security and VPN comes to play. So the VPN takes a perimeter-based approach to security. What it really means is once the user connects, they are inside the corporate network and in absence of any other security solutions in place, they could potentially have broad access to the network and which could expose it to the threats. And every time a user or a device is automatically trusted in that way, it places an organization data, applications, and the intellectual property at risk. And if you see from the VPN point of view, um, they don't give much insight into the application. If you see at the OSI layer, they are at that network layer, the layer three, and they don't have visibility into that application, which I'm talking about the layer seven. Mm -hmm. So essentially lack of application access control, policies at that application layer. And so when we think about today's enterprise environment, and we know that employees are connecting from everywhere, accessing their applications from everywhere, we know that these apps are not just in one location, they are in multiple locations. They are in public cloud, private clouds, there is still some in the corporate data center. Bottom line is we live in a multi-cloud world, and we know that people are connecting to these apps from anywhere and everywhere. Now, in the past, if you think about how VPNs were designed, right, you, you had a corporate device that was given to you, a laptop or a desktop. On that laptop or desktop was some kind of VPN client that was running, and that VPN client connected back to that corporate data center to a specific gateway. We had very predefined, um, you know, environments in which connectivity was formed. Today, we live in a mobile world, right? IT is supporting BYOD, bring your own, own devices. Device. So this existing VPN architecture is just no longer feasible and manageable. The truth is enterprises need to think about a completely new concept. And this is where I agree with you, zero trust network access, ZTNA, is the right approach. And this ZTNA, it's a product and a service that creates the identity and the context space. So it's all based on the identity and context. It creates a logical access boundary around these resources, which are these applications or set of applications. And at the same time, these applications are hidden from the discovery and access is restricted via like a trust broker, which is sitting in between. This broker is going to verify the identity, the context, and then it will apply the policies to these uh, end users or remote users before they have access to the resources, whether they are on-prem or in cloud or multi-cloud. So this removes the application assets from public visibility and it reduces significant surface area of attack. So in short, if you ask me ZTNA, it's all about least privilege. Don't trust anyone, even if a user is from the inside the enterprise network. And that's the simplicity of ZTNA. All cloud hosted, all software, no hardware, makes it easy to deploy. Absolutely. And from an IT perspective, each user and device is verified here, like we mentioned with the ZTNA. It's not just looking at the user, it's the context mm -hmm. and the identity. And it is validated before it's given access to the app or resources. So Zero Trust verifies user identity and privileges, as well as the device identity and security. And when we say about the device security, we are talking about the endpoint with the with the right firmware, with the all the updates which are there in place to protect that endpoint, because these are the endpoints which are going to get connected to your corporate data center. So all these verification, which is done by the secure access or by the ZTNA framework is very granular per session. And using the same access policy, whether the user is accessing the resource uh, in the data center or in the cloud, it applies those policies based on uh, the profile uh, which authenticates the user and the devices. And um, 
to give you an example out here, uh, an end user, uh, let's say, is using a Windows 10 uh, endpoint device like a laptop, which is enabled with an antivirus software. And the policy defines that uh, it needs to access Office 365 using only a Chrome browser only. So you are looking at both the user and the endpoint device to access that resource, which is Office 365, using a Chrome browser only. So the policy clearly defines, to your point, what you can access, how you can access it, all while making sure that that user's device is also secure. Secure. Which, which makes sense. So, you know, what I'm hearing you say, Rohan, is that with zero trust network access, even if a user has been permitted access to a specific area in the network or an application, it does not mean that they can now freely move around to other parts of the network or access any other application unless they have been given permission thanks to the policy that's been defined. Yeah. So in my mind, what I also hear you saying is that ZTNA simplifies a lot of the operations in that it delivers that improved user experience. Why? Because it works transparently in the background. So if you think about it, you click on an application that you want to access. The client, the ZTNA client, essentially does all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Secure connections are established quickly without the user having to do any of those three or four manual steps. Um, security protocols and inspections are applied to ensure that optimal experience. So bottom line, users don't have to worry about setting up any connections or making any kind of changes that's all pretty much predefined. Absolutely, absolutely. Secure access, zero trust network access, don't trust anyone. ZTNA is the next evolution of VPNs and really provides that flexibility and agility that an enterprise customer needs to enable a secure work from anywhere workforce while ensuring the employees and the user have most optimal experience. Folks, I hope you all enjoyed this session and have a good understanding of secure access and ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access, and how it is helping the enterprise build a highly distributed, scalable, and a secure infrastructure to support a world of multi-clouds. Thank you and see you soon in our next episode.